So let's get right into how we can speed up the performance of the machine uh, by cutting down on what runs in the background. Uh, I'm going to do this for both Windows 7 and Windows 10 and as you can see here I've got a Windows 7 machine running just here. Um, so we'll go into that in a little while but I also have, uh, I'm running Windows 10 and that's here. Um, first things to talk about is really what's running in the background. The best way to find that out is with the task manager. If you just type in the word task you'll see the task manager uh, comes up in Windows 10. Uh, this is actually quite a good view of what's going on in the system and if we look uh, by clicking the memory here uh, we can see what's using up the most RAM and that typically is what's going to slow things down. Uh, a lot of people say well it's the CPU that slows things down. Well that's only going to be true if something is using 100% CPU. Uh, you can all go, you can see here the total system usage is 12% at the moment. Nothing's hitting here 100%. So let's look at the memory because that will give us a good guide as to what, we, what might be running in the background that perhaps we can uh, cut down on. Uh, now doing the same thing under Windows uh, 7 Basically, what we're going to do is do a search for Task Manager. So T A S K M G R will bring up the Task Manager, and that will give us this view, which is similar to the other one, but not quite the same. Uh, what we want to make sure we're seeing, though, is all processes from all users. Now, this means uh, other users that might be logged onto the system, but it also includes the system. So, by ticking that, we get an awful lot more shown here than you would normally see. Uh, performance we can see our CPU usage is jumping up a bit and we can see we've not got an awful lot of physical RAM in this system um, <clears throat> 3 gigabytes so uh, we're using up uh, one and a half gigabytes so that's half the half the system memory that is as shown here on this graph so what we really want to know is what is it that's taking up the memory on here by organizing it in this order here we can see that uh, a5 backup um, whatever that is, is taking up a fair bit and QBDBMG and these, these descriptions are not very helpful. So the first thing we should do is just expand this window a little, give ourselves a bit of room here, expand the description because the descriptions are quite helpful, expand the actual uh, system usage, expand the file name so that we can actually see what's going on. Now we've got a better idea. Uh, a5backup.exe, well I know what that is, that's an Atix 5 backup program that runs regularly um, on this machine. QBDBMGN, that's the QuickBooks, we use QuickBooks for our accounts and this is the QuickBooks Management Center uh, database manager that, that runs that, which actually runs on this little PC here and we've got a few other bits and pieces there um, so we can we can get a quick a quick view as to what might be might be causing a problem now whilst we're in windows 7 let's just quickly look at something called msconfig and if you just type msconfig uh, it brings up this little tool here now what this allows us to do is to decide what should be starting up when the machine starts the more things that are loaded in memory when the machine first starts the slower the machine will be um, that only becomes true when the amount of physical memory has been used up. So if you're not sure about this then check the video on uh, how to speed up the computer tips number one video that explains why memory is such an important thing. Um, and so what we really want to look at is, is combine these two views and give us an idea of what it is that might be slowing the system down. So we know that this A5 backup is running all the time and that that's using up quite a bit of memory. So we can turn that off. Now, because no one actually physically logs onto this computer, I'm not going to turn that off because actually it's an automated process that, that, that runs every day. If this were my own PC, I definitely would turn that off because I, I will run the backup when I want to run the backup and I won't necessarily want it interrupting what I'm doing. So I would turn that off. Now basically you'd find the program in this list here and then just, uh, just untick it. So here, <clears throat> If we look at the QB uh, management, we've got this QuickBooks or automatic updates. Well, we don't need that running all the time. Uh, and we don't need Microsoft OneNote running every time we start up. And we don't need 
Office 2010 starting up every time or Magic Disk which is a disk uh, imaging software um, that I use uh, Flex Net Connect I don't even know what that is uh, and so I certainly don't want it running all the time. Go to meeting, go to assist, go to assist. These are great applications. We use them all the time in technical support, but no one actually uses this PC, i.e. this Windows 7 PC for technical support, so they definitely don't need to run. TomTom Tom Home doesn't need to run. Google Updates doesn't need to run. Uh, Office 2010, there's another version of Office 2010 running there. The Trend Micro is the antivirus, so I definitely want that to run. If I apply that, what it will do is it will now mean the next time the computer restarts these applications are not going to load they will they'll still be there we're not deleting anything we're just not loading them every time we start the machine now we need to uh, we need to restart in order for that to to take place and I'm gonna let it do that in a little while but uh, not just yet I just want to double check all of this lot to see if there's anything here that's particularly uh, processor hungry and there isn't really um, don't worry about service host that's a system uh, system uh, process so we can't we can't mess around with that uh, you, that's the other thing you do really need to know what you're turning off if you don't recognize the software then a, you know you need to investigate whether or not that's a legitimate piece of software that was installed or whether it's actually uh, actually uh, you know part of the operating system um, if it's running by the system, uh, then uh, you know it's a good indication as to why uh, why it would be running. But but yeah, that that if you're not sure, don't turn them off. But what I'm trying to say is, if you turn off anything that you like the TomTom Tom updater. Look, I don't update the TomTom. Tom. As you saw, I turned that off earlier. I don't update my TomTom Tom every day, and I don't need it checking to see that there's updates every day because it actually uses up quite a lot of processing power. Um, now one other quick thing to show you is how to uh, you, you get to this task manager by the way by pressing control shift and escape that's the keyboard shortcut to bring this up why is that important because if we're in an application that crashes you can't always get to this so control shift escape will bring up the task manager if I close it now control shift escape there it is again um, <clears throat> so that's a handy thing to know if you don't know that already so I'm going to go ahead and restart that machine and when I do it's going to log off the session that we have remotely there and we'll be back to the Windows um, 10 desktop which is great um, and now we can actually uh, look at how to do this in Windows 10. Now with this the task manager is, is t both task manager and MS config so uh, we can literally just go straight into the task manager and look at startups if we look at the performance first we can we can see how much memory we've got on this machine I'm actually running this on a Microsoft Surface machine uh, with iCore 7 processor and um, 8 gigabytes of RAM so so it's pretty quick uh, I don't really have any major issues with this uh, performance wise but we're just going through the exercise and showing you how you do this under Windows 10 uh, quite simply, uh, if we look at the uh, if we look at the performance and we look at the processes here, and we put everything in order of memory as we've done before, we can see what's running here and what's using up the most RAM, and then we can look at the startups and decide what we need to start up and what we don't. And there's an awful lot running here. Uh, Google Drive is starting up every single time, and we can see that it actually has quite a high impact. Skype is starting every time, so maybe I just want to disable that so it doesn't start and maybe I don't need Google Drive to to be there every time so I can disable that you know in, in the event I want to run Google Drive I can always launch the application I don't need it running constantly now this Microsoft Surfer, uh, Windows Server computer is a piece of software that backs up the workstation whenever it's brought into the office so I'm gonna leave that running Snagit is actually currently running now um, and I do use it a lot but I don't need it to run all the time and as you can see disabling that doesn't prevent me from recording what I'm recording uh, I'm not turning anything off right now I'm just saying the next time Windows loads don't load all of these things uh, automatically uh, none of this needs to run so I'm going to disable that again it has a high impact certainly look at stuff that's high impact and disable that first uh, iTunes helper yep don't need that I don't need help with my iTunes and if I did 
if I go into help on iTunes it will actually start that program for me so I don't need it running all the time every single time Windows Bing service I don't need that either uh, receiver updater don't need that so I'm just basically going through everything Microsoft link I do use uh, I don't, don't know what that is I'm gonna disable it uh, Citrix connection center I don't need uh, it is disabled anyway so there you go so now we've cut down um, oh and Skype let's just disable that I don't have that running all of the time um, so yeah I'm pretty pretty happy with that so now when I close this uh, it will probably prompt me no it doesn't sorry Windows 10 doesn't prompt you for uh, to restart because it doesn't need you to here we are we have rebooted again I'm going to use my control shift and escape on here to bring this up and we can see that our CPU so our memory usages are now only 26% we should be running considerably quicker at this moment this is this peak here is when we rebooted and this here is a historical graph of what's going on now as you can see the amount of memory is low the amount of disk usage is low we're literally 27% RAM and that's that's largely down to um, the fact that we're doing a live screen capture uh, we can prove that by looking at the processes and see that Snagit is by far the biggest user which is the uh, screen capture software that we're using let's just go jump onto the Windows 7 machine again uh, control shift and escape on there brings up the task manager again and we can have a quick look at the performance of this system now remember before we were using um, uh, half the RAM it's come down a little uh, it was 1.55 it's now 1.27 uh, again the processor is uh, a bit lively because we were we we're um, running this uh, task manager in fact task manager itself uses up quite a bit of processing power um, so hopefully you found that useful and you'll realize that uh, just going through that exercise of using MS config and turning off programs that start up uh, will save your system quite a lot of, of running and the other thing is remember to reboot your system you know at the start of every day uh, I tend not to uh, just put things in standby and then keep running because that, that, that slowly but surely you're just eating up more and more of the system RAM if you found this useful please subscribe to the channel follow the, the series of 10 videos talking about 10 things that you can do for your computer uh, this is the PC version of that uh, of, of, of tip number two which is looking at startup programs hope you've enjoyed it hope you subscribe and if you've got any questions please do use the comments section below we always answer the comments so thank you for taking the time to watch